there, Geek Vengers. I'm standing here with the wonderfully talented and awesome John Noble here on the last day of Alamo City Comic Con. How's it going, John? Oh, we're having a wonderful time. She, she, she just had a photo taken and poked me in the eye with that ear. I just wanted to share that with your friends. So he, if I look a bit blind, it's because... He's hey, you doing? He snuggled up in the ear. He liked yeah, it. Yeah, I liked it, actually. <laughs> um, so is this your first time in San Antonio? No, I've been here as a tourist. Uh, I haven't done a convention before, but I've come as a tourist and did the River Walk and Alamo twice actually in the past. When what are you? What has been your impression of the actual Comic Con this weekend? Very well organised. Very well organised. Uh, it seems to be seamless from what I've seen. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what goes on behind the scenes, but well, keep, from my point of view, it's been seamless. Yeah. Well, and keeping the uh, guests here happy is one of the big parts of doing a convention. So hearing that you're enjoying it is great. I'm being really well looked out. Oh, that's good. Except Sabrina gets lost all the time, but <laughs> <laughs> is, she she does. She takes me everywhere. It's it's easy to get lost in the building. <laughs> uh, a lot of. Uh, Viewers out there, as well as us here at GBTV, have been big fans of Fringe when it aired. So we just wanted to ask you a quick few questions about Fringe. Sure. You really got to portray one of the most complex characters on the show, both as the, I guess you'd say, present-day universe Walter Bishop, who, yep. you know, had his brain messed with, and then switching over to a completely type of character mm. in the alternate universe as mm. Walternate. Mm. Did you have a particular favorite version, or did you of love the, them, uh, of, Walter? of Walter? Yeah, I did. Eventually, I did about thirteen versions of him. Subtle changes, flashbacks, flash forwards. It was very interesting to play between Walter and Walter. Well, Walter is much more fun. I'm dosing a caterpillar. Dosing, as in LST. Well, it's a special blend. I see. I mean, poor old Walter. He was sort of stiff and had to rule the country. Walter didn't do anything except please himself. So I liked him better. And then got to take LSD. Did he? Oh, really? <laughs> really? So yes, he, he did. He did. What was that one brown Betty which opens up with him taking a huge toke of something or other? And we wondered if we'd get that past the census, but we did. I think you yeah, got away with quite a lot. We, we the sort of did. On the show. But it's because Walter was so crazy, they thought no one would take any notice of this. The kids wouldn't take any notice of him. Um, Fringe has since become one of, I think, the modern day cult classics of TV shows. Mm. I, I know y'all all cared a lot about it when you were yes. filming it. Did you have a sense? as it was winding down and ending that it was going to have such a lasting impression on the on the science fiction fans out there, the TV fans out there? When I was doing that show, and I felt at all times, even when it was going struggling for numbers, I always felt that it was, it would be a, a huge culture. I, it was just, I knew it was so beautiful within it, you know. It's, and so, no, it doesn't surprise me at all. And in fact, now, it's much bigger than it ever was. Oh, yeah. It's huge. Not only here, but in Europe, where I just was. Everywhere I went, there were people. So it's, it is a, already a classic. It's certainly a classic in my book. I still go through and watch it all the time. Yeah. Um, you currently had been uh, working on Sleepy Hollow. Yes. So a lot of people recognize him for that. Um, also in The Hobbit. Not me. Oh, was, not The Hobbit. Um, Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings, sorry. Edit that out, Tim. No, keep, <laughs> keep it in. Keep it in. Yeah, but could you... I, could, I could make that up that I was in The Hobbit. Everyone said, <laughs> oh, all right. No, I had myself covered up like an orb, but you can have my signature. They're all one long movie to me. <laughs> That's why I get it mixed up. Could you tell us a bit about how it was uh, working in over in, in New Zealand and uh, with the cast? On Lord cast? of the Rings? Yes. That was probably the most special uh, event that any actor could ever wish. Not only actors. It was freakish. How, how special it was. Uh, I've never seen anything like it, neither has anyone else that worked on it. And, and for some reason or other, everyone wanted to realize Peter Jackson's dream. This is impossible, it's an impossible dream. And everyone wanted to make it happen, and we did. Fantastic experience. And uh, you're about to be coming out on, uh, upcoming on elementary, yes, correct? Yes, yeah. yes I am. Uh, are you able to talk about that at well, all? Give the, some of the fans Well, you know, if, if there are elementary fans watching, for the last three seasons, I've been talking about Sherlock's father, and uh, 
not in very nice terms actually, <laughs> but he's always been present. And so now I come back, at, I come in as Sherlock's father. You know yourself, Sherlock. You know who you are. Something of a puzzle. Well, perhaps I can be of assistance. Quite good with puzzles. Just for one season, but it's really interesting. I get to play against uh, Johnny Lee Miller all the time and Lucy Liu a bit, and they're both brilliant, so it's good. All right, well, be sure and look out for that. And we want to thank you so much for taking a bit of your time this morning to chat with us. You're very welcome. And uh, we're all big fans, and we hope you enjoy the rest of your day here at the con and in, in San Antonio. Antonio, <laughs> don't let it that out. Hey, thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs>